Okay, guys. Uh, this week on men's health, we actually have an impromptu uh, interview. Not uh, interview, conversation, phone call with yeah, just a conversation where we just flowed. Yeah, with with Joshua Ayers, and the topic was so good we 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 couldn't let it go. It was all about the girth, right? Yeah, it's about, <laughs> yeah, about, about the girth. You gotta you gotta check it out. We 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 can't go any further than uh, that. Yeah, we we can't. We, we you know just uh, might just, kill you if we tell. Oh you. God, kill you or something? I don't know. Just it's all about. <laughs> but the girth. Gosh. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this one. Girth. I don't know if the guys will enjoy it more, more so than the girls. <laughs> the girls will enjoy it more than guys. Enjoy, guys. Definitely. Hey, everyone. This is Reggie from ProRance. And if you haven't heard about Anchor by now, where have you been? No, seriously. It is the easiest way to make a podcast. And let me explain why. It's free. I mean, completely free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more platforms. You can start making money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Which is great. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Oh, go ahead, turn them on. Ah, oh, there you're we good. go. We no, got you. Good. Guys. We got you. Great. Yeah, great. we just you weren't you all the way you weren't all the way in. <laughs> hey, you got it all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's what she said, huh? Uh, <laughs> protocol. Uh, <laughs> oh, you, so. I don't know if you guys saw that in my story. Did you see the chick who was like, "Dude, I was uh, gonna bring that up in the conversation, dude. I was gonna bring that up." And she's like, "The girth doesn't match." Yo, I was like, "What? This is today? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's today." I have, I have not been on social dude, media his story. Day. So his story has a. Uh, you got his story, right? Oh, I'll pull it up. Yeah, you might want to pull it up, I was, brother. I was dying. Dude. He had the screenshots of this. Well, yeah, the story. Uh, and this chick was doubting it was him. D- doubting him was doing what? Uh, she, was like, she was like, that ain't you. She was like, the girth don't match. <laughs> she was like, the girth don't match. I was like. Uh, the person who doubted you, did you know them? No. So I posted it in a. Uh, in like American bodybuilding, whatever Facebook group. Okay. And uh, so I put up a transformation picture and I was like, Hey, That's you know, this is my transformation. My goal uh-huh. is to beat this next time. What's everybody else doing? And then it got, it has like mad comments. There's, I don't even remember how many there is now. There's like over a hundred likes. There's like a hundred and something comments or something like that. And there were people that were like, Oh, this isn't him. It's bullshit. Blah, blah. And then like the one dude put up the most savage fucking like comment that I had seen. And it was something like, like, my goal is to not be, like, someone like you who puts up, like, fake fucking transformations. <laughs> wow. Like, he's, like, he's like, this is so fucked up that you would do this. There's, like, kids on here who are naive enough to, like, believe this bullshit. Like, how dare you kind of thing, blah, 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 blah. Haters are everywhere, <laughs> man. Uh, <laughs> wow. I, I had contemplated because the they're, like, if your face was in the one picture, then, like, maybe we'd believe it. But it's, like, you can, like... If you know my body, you can tell it's me. Plus Bro, she like was, but ribs. the thing about it is she was like, the fact that she was like, mm, I mean, <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. She's like, mm, the right? girth don't match though. <laughs> right? I'm like, you can see my tattoo right there. And then, so I, I thought about this because I have, I have more pictures and I have videos with my face in it. From yeah. The exact same shot. And I actually did post them in like on the comments, and then I immediately deleted them because I was like, "Fuck this! I'm just gonna pump this as much publicity as I can get." Oh yeah, absolutely. And you have people defending you, bro. You got this one person was like, I mean, I couldn't know if it was a girl or guy. They were like, "So he?" Oh, the girl was like, "Did he copycat the tattoo too?" I was like, "Damn, yeah, yeah." yeah. Freedom fighters. I was like, "Damn." Coming in, yeah. I was people fighting for the girth. (laughs) Yeah, they're taking screenshots from my Instagram and like posting it in there. They're like, "No, it's the same fucking dude." I was like, "This is dope, dude." Like I said, I would have when I saw the comments going like that's the same girl. Look, yo, I, I got I can't go can't go any further. <laughs> that's the problem nowadays, though, man. That's the problem. People are always hating, 
and they doubt me because they can't do it. That's what it is. They're, Absolutely, they're, they're hating. Absolutely. Oh, and um, so we, so that you know, I have my, uh, I have. We have a guest on our show today, a, a guest host, which is Jeff, my cousin. He wanted to stop by. He's he's looking to start a podcast too, so he can. He's gonna. You're gonna hear another voice intervene. He's gonna sound a lot smarter than Ray and I, but you know, <laughs> what, what they the always do. True, they always true. do. What the hell ever. But yo, Jeff, say what's up to uh, Joshua. Joshua, pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure to meet you so, too, my man. It's all about the girth, brother. <laughs> hey, right. Nothing but the girth. Yeah. Hey. You know, but circling back on what you said, I think a lot of it is uh, just saltiness and people being uh, haters. But I also think because of the age of spin that we live in, and it's so easy to create this uh, facade or this image of who you want to be versus who you really are. People are naturally coming in doubting. Mm-hmm. You know, when 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 you actually that's true. there's so much untruth in the world right now that when you do post something that's realistic, people can't tell it apart anymore. And I think that's part of the problem. One hundred. That's true. One hundred. And also, yeah, they had, they can't see your face. Oh well, you know? yeah, that's they, would, they wouldn't say it to your yeah. face, Joshua. They would not say it to your yeah. face. Definitely. Keyboard warriors, baby. But the thing is, like, honestly, honestly, uh-huh. I love it because I haven't gotten any hate in a really long time. So, like, then it's like, fuck yes. Like, I know I'm doing something right. Because if you're not getting hate, you're not doing something exactly. right. That's how I look at it. So exactly. I was super excited when I saw that. I was like, let's fucking go. And I did go live. <laughs> yeah. I went live on my uh, Facebook last night and, like, talked about the whole thing. But then I told people, I was like, and I brought up that exact point that you talked about. Like, it's social media. It's the internet. And, like, people do put on facades. They put on fakes. They put on fronts. You don't know, you know, what's real. And that's why it's causing, like, a lot of problems with adults and kids and honestly like for real like and i've i've been pretty confident like my whole life right Mm -hmm. i could not imagine being a child who like wasn't active who you know wasn't even like relatively in shape yeah um who didn't have like a lot of friends or something and have access to social media to where i see kids who are popping bottles they're on fucking private jets they're Mm. on yachts and shit like that and like Mm -hmm. seeing that every day and like you know then that would make you feel like shit about yourself but at the end of the you know especially when you're young you have no idea what's real and what's not. So like, even in my live, I was like, 100%, I want you guys to question everything you see. If I post something that makes you got, you know, you guys are doubting, like, I want you to question it. If you guys, mm, like, if yeah. I say something and you've heard different, reach out to me. I will jump on a live with you guys and do a 100%, like, I'll be 100% honest. Like, if I'm wrong about something that I've said, I will own up to that. I will, like, gladly have a conversation with anybody about anything that they doubt, like, if you guys think my picture is like, you know, fake, whatever, I have an entire library documenting the entire like process. Like you can scroll back through my Instagram, find that same exact picture with my face in it. You know, nice. it's like something like, like how, do, how do you have 12 abs in uh, Joshua? I hear what? <laughs> how, how do you have 12 abs? I don't, I don't get that. Is that real? <laughs> oh, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, so the way that I got that actually, um, let me see. What was it? It was a, about 28 years ago. There was this woman and this guy and they just got after it. And then, you know, their genetics just kind of came together and God bless <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. Yeah. If they, the right parents. Yes. Yeah, I guess, dude, if any of them start asking about the girth, I'm, I'm hanging up this phone. <laughs> We're just, this show is over. Now, Joshua, man, props to you because you did something that I don't think a lot of people uh, would have done in your situation, which is, you know, initially you put up the pictures to kind of validate the original post, but then you deleted it. And you know what? I think mm-hmm. that takes a that's that's a big step because ultimately the crowd shouldn't define how you move. If you felt comfortable mm-hmm. posting those pictures without the face or a snapshot of the tattoo, then that's your prerogative. You know what I'm saying? That's your story to tell. So I think that was mm-hmm. a big move on your part, like pulling it down because guess what? You don't need to validate anything. And I also like the thought process of, you know what? Let them talk. Let's, let, let's get a buzz going. Exactly. Let's, let's get a buzz let's going. Let's get it going. Yeah. Blow me up, baby. Yo, I'm all about it. Yeah, you're all about that. that, that that's the uh, Tupac mentality. Nice. Haters <laughs> will be your elevators. Right. Haters will be your elevators. So Hey, hey, as long as they're talking about you, no matter if it's good or bad. Boom. Yeah, no such thing as bad publicity, my man. You know what I think, too? I think a a lot of it, too, has to do with, uh, because the girl that said it, you know, she was sitting there like, her boyfriend was like, man, that's not really, you know, she was sitting there fantasizing about it. It was like, exactly. She was like, yo, let me, she was like, let me make him feel better. But she forgot the mmm. She put the mmm instead of the hum. She forgot the H. You know what I mean? She had to put the H first. She put mmm. The girt don't don't match. The boyfriend in the back are like, bitch, I never said to do that. The truth Uh, she, oh, yeah. the truth. she might be ex-girlfriend. I'm like, damn, girl, I didn't say the girl. I just said the dude is thick. 
<laughs> oh, is that what you meant? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tattoo don't match either. No, oh, yeah, but yeah, sure. <laughs> no, but that's awesome, bro. You you you're um killing it right now. I like the energy that you, you, you like. 2021 came up and you just hit the blocks, killing it. Trying, my man. Trying now. You're doing it, bro. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's no such thing as trying. You actually yes, you're actually killing it. Um, and was I right? Because I know I I mentioned. Is that what you're doing? Are you starting a, a an app? So, no. oh, okay. Uh-oh. watch out! Hold on, hold on. No, so, so, so technically, yeah. technically, I already have an app. Okay, okay. So I do, I do have my own custom branded app that okay. I use for uh, all of my clients, and so that's how I run my program. So I'm not sure uh, when, what month was it that we did the the last podcast? Uh, it was in November. November. Yeah. So since then, I don't think I've even told you guys. I haven't really made it like officially public. Like, um. I technically left my salary job, and so like I'm full time running my business now. Nice, Ooh, that's big awesome. things. Man, that's why. I big love, I love that, thing. Joshua. So you left yes, your job, you're running your business. Um, man, that's why you're cranking like that. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, what is your name? What's the name of your app? The name of it. So the app, it's not something that you can like necessarily down. So you need like a uh, you need like a login. So okay. it's like once somebody signs up, uh, but mm. it's it's called it's a trainerize app. Okay. Yeah, and so within that, like all my clients are able to see all of their workouts, their meal plans. Uh, we're able to communicate. There's a, a messaging built inside of that, and then also I do like weekly check-ins with all my clients. So I film videos and I go over their entire check-in. So I send out a form weekly, and it's questions about the previous week, the current week, how everything's going. I also ask just like some general questions, just kind of build a little bit more rapport. And then, so what I do is I use an app on my computer called Loom. So that way I'm able to record my face and also screen share at the same time. And then, so what I do is I have their check-in form. I go mm-hmm. through all the questions and then I open up the, uh, the desktop app um, where all their pro- progress is. And so I'll go through their complete nutrition. I'll go through their workout and then make any adjustments that we need to and go through like their entire program and uh, make any adjustments that way. So that way it's like very personalized. They get to see my face. They get to see exactly what I'm looking at and changing. And then I send that to them through the application as well. Wow. Sounds very innovative. It does. And yeah. interactive. Hey, is there anyone that you would not accept as a client or any type of person uh, that you would say, no, this is way too much for me. To, I, can't, I can't do this one. Mm-mm, no. If we, if, if, if we just don't jive. So I like to get on the call with everybody. And like, if we, you know, if we're just not a good fit, then we're not a good fit. And so I'm actually part of a community of over 700 online personal trainers, which mm-hmm. is kind of like how I got started in this. And I actually, um, and on the leadership team within this organization as well. And so we have coaches that specialize in all kinds of different things. So coaches for gut health, coaches for, you know, uh, if you want to be a better cheerleader, if you are a busy, you know, whatever, um, we have coaches for literally like everything. Um, but I mean, if somebody's not like a 10 out of 10, like if they're not committed, if they're not like willing to work, if they're not willing to put in the effort and stuff like that, uh, because I just expect the same thing uh, that I put in. So I'm going to put in 110% and I expect like at least like 100% back. So if somebody's like, you know, on the fence or whatever, um, then, you know, I, I'm not going to want to work with that individual. Um, but other than that, I mean, not really. Like I work with males. I work with females, uh, younger, older. That doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they do have like some sort of like serious condition <clears throat> or something like that, uh, and, I, you know, whether it's like something health wise that I am either not familiar with or comfortable with. I do, you know, like I said, like I'm part of this community, so I could, I could easily, you know, set them up with somebody else in the community who would be much better suited for them. Um, or, you know, if we get on the phone and we just don't jive for whatever reason, like our energy is not there, you know, like our personalities just don't line up, you know, I'll be like, Hey, you know, like, you know, we're probably just not a good fit, but you know, I know somebody who would, you, I think you guys would hundred percent like be really solid to work together and be able to get like way better results um, than we would, you know, because like if, if somebody doesn't, like me, they don't like my energy. They don't like the way like I approach things, and they need like something different. Like if they need somebody more like to like sugarcoat like bullshit or something oh, like that, then gotcha. it's like you know I know females that'll do that for you. Um, <laughs> and then I know people. I know people who are even like harder than I am. I know people who fucking like will give you the toughest fucking love that you could ever imagine. So mm. you know, no matter what. But yeah, no, there's not really too many that I won't. But I, I specifically specialize 
right now I'm focusing on people who either want to build muscle or people who want to like kind of like lean out. Gotcha. I'm not more so focused on like, uh, you know, work. I will work as athletes, but I'm not really focused on, you know, if you want to be a better basketball player, football player, stuff like that. Can I do it? Yes. But uh, as you guys know, with like any, any kind of business, the more you specialize, the more you hone in, the more of a niche you Absolutely. have, the better you can focus at your craft, the better you can get at it, and the better you can reach those people um, who need exactly what you provide. So that's a super interesting approach that you take. So just because I'm interested in obtaining your services, it's not necessarily guaranteed that you'll take me on as a client. So I'm kind of curious, Correct. how does that process work? Like when you have that initial conversation, what are some of the mm-hmm. questions that you ask? Like what is, it, uh, what is it that you're looking for that kind of helps move the needle as to whether it's somebody that you're going to take on or not? Do you, do you, want, me, do you want me to do a role play with you? Um, well, you guys do it. Just don't mention girth. <laughs> <laughs> Go see, for it, guys. See, Reg just made me uncomfortable. No, no, no. Go for it. Go for it. Now, now go. Hey, let's, you know, let's do it. <laughs> all right. All right. So I call, hop on the phone, I'll be like, hello, what's up, blah, blah. And I'll be, you know, I'll be like, hey, like, thanks so much. I appreciate you getting on the call with me. Like, it shows you're committed and, like, it shows that you value my time. So in return, I want to make this call super valuable for you. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Awesome, my man. So there's going to be three main things that I want to cover. So the first thing is I want to get to know you better and more about your goals just to see if I can actually help you. The second thing is I want to get to know like what you're struggling with and why you haven't been able to achieve those goals on your own. And then thirdly, if I can help you and if you do qualify for my program, I'll invite you to work with me. How's that sound? Wow. So, you know, just the side step outside of character, you've identified up front exactly what you're looking for. Um, yes, and sir. you've already kind of planted the seed that there's no guarantee that this call is going to lead towards you taking them on as a client. This guy's this guy's a master. What he does, he is he? No, no. He but is. keep going. Keep keep role no, playing. Let okay, me hear. Okay, I'm let me hear how this ends. I, I, feel I want to see if he takes you. Oh, okay. All right. Um, all right. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. Perfect. All right, my man. Now, with that being said, if you do qualify for my program and I do offer you to work with me, I either need a hell yes or a hell no because I'm very specific about who I work with and I only take on a limited number of clients per month. Meaning, the offer that I pro- do provide for you is only valid to the end of the call. How's that sound? Sounds great. Hell yeah. Awesome. So what's your number one goal right now? Uh, I'm trying to get abs. Trying to get the ultimate six pack. Yes. Okay. And what are you currently doing right now to work towards that goal? Um, Doing a lot of eating, but that's why I'm (laughs) I'm calling you because I I, I figure that I need to figure out a workout plan and maybe even build some type of nutrition into that. Um, And I'm I'm seeking the help of a professional. Okay. Okay. And now let me ask you another question, my man. So do you have a support system such as a significant other or somebody who like supports your goals? I do. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And would that be, is that a, is that a wife? Is that a partner, a gym buddy? That's a wife. Wife. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And does she know that we're on this call right now or are we on a secret mission? She, no, she does. Matter of fact, that she, she prompted me to call you. She's, she, she wants that six pack as bad as I do. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love that. I love that. All right, my man. So next thing I'd like you to do is just walk me through a typical day of eating for you, like breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and be a hundred percent honest. Cause it's only going to help me serve you better. All right. Uh, morning can consist of anything from oatmeal to Cheerios. Uh, afternoon is usually some boiled eggs and toast. Um, late afternoon may consist of, you know, some cookies, some chips. Uh, evening can range anywhere between a heavy meal of, you know, potatoes and steak uh, to salad and uh, 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 I was about to say toasted roasted chicken. Um, and then the evening is usually polished off with ice cream, maybe a brew or a Guinness. Okay. Okay. And then, so with that, so you, you know, you said a brew or Guinness, so, so you do drink alcohol, correct? Yeah. I have like a, a brew or two once, a, once or twice a week. Once or twice a week. Yeah. Okay. And then, so do you go out drinking at all on the weekends with the wife or the boys or anything? No. No. Okay. And then also, so do you smoke uh, any cigarettes or marijuana or anything? Nope. Okay, awesome. And then, so how many times a week on average would you say that you eat out? Twice. Twice a week? Okay. And where do we normally go? Chick-fil-A, uh, uh, Olive Garden, uh, sometimes pizza for Marcos. Okay, okay. And then, so what would you say we probably spend around anywhere from 25 30 bucks? That's about fair, 25 to to 45 in that range, yeah. Okay. 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 Awesome. And so you mentioned that your number one goal is like, you want to get abs, you want to get a six pack, correct? Correct. Okay. And so why is that important to you? Like right now? Well, because I'm 
partially shallow, if we're being all the way honest, and I'm getting up there in age, and I've never really been able to uh, lock in that six pack fully. And so I kind of, it's kind of like a bucket list item. And I, I just think okay. it'd be pretty badass to be, you know, 40 something and still walk the beach with a six pack. Okay. Okay. I love that, my man. And so, like, next question is, like, how does your current situation, like, where you're at make you feel, like, not having that six-pack, like, not being exactly, like, where you want? I know that you said that, you you know, you kind of feel a little bit shallow. Could you elaborate on that? I will shallow in the sense, you know, well, you watch enough TV, you see these guys walking around here, you're on, you're on the gram, you see, like, these grandpas walking around ripped, and, you know, here I am. And I don't quite have a beer belly, but it's not where it could be or should be. So um, when I say shallow, just I know I could be doing better. I, I know I have the ability to do better. Um, I just think having the knowledge and having someone kind of pushing me in the right direction on both sides would, would really help me, you know, get to that goal sooner. Okay, okay. And then so what, you know, what kind of like led you to that? Like, I know that, you know, you said your wife wants you to have the six pack. What made you kind of notice that like you're not where you want to be? Were you, you know, did you walk by the mirror one day and, and you kind of glance at yourself? Is your favorite T-shirt like fitting a little snug or kind of like what, you know, what kind of trigger? T-shirts a little snug. And uh, again, like I said, it was always one of those things, we, you know, regardless of how much sit-ups or ab focused exercise that I do, I kind of feel like I don't, um, I'm not disciplined and I don't see it all the way through. So I kind of start to see the, the, the little markings, you know, a, a, a little bit of definition. I'm like, all right, I'm good. I'm gonna, <laughs> let me take my shirt off. And then, you know, like mm-hmm. two, three weeks later, that's kind of faded and gone. It's like starting all over again. Um, so I really okay. think it's about, you know, not just getting in there and doing it. It's about maintaining it, you know, maintaining that discipline okay. and seeing it all the way through. And, and how does your current situation make you feel? And how, you know, and how does it make you feel like knowing that, like, you know, they kind of keep disappearing and you kind of keep putting the weight on and stuff like that? How does that, like, make you feel emotionally? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it, you know, it's weird, right? Because uh, I'm a fairly confident guy. So even though I'm not quite where I want to be, I still always feel like, all right, I'm not I'm not the uh, the, the ugliest guy in the room. So mm-hmm. this is this is probably more for um, my own. Like I said, I think it's really more of a bucket list item. Like I, I just I want that feeling of waking up, you know, taking off my shirt, whether it be at the pool, whether it's at home, whether it's at the beach and being like, yes, you know, I accomplished this goal. And I you know mm-hmm. and I got that look that I was, you know, I was always striving for It's kind of just okay. really where I'm at with it. And then with that, so like, you know, you said having that confidence to be able to do that. So currently, like when you're at home or, you know, if you go to like a pool or something like that. Do you do you typically keep your shirt on? No, I take the shirt off. Shirt comes off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do you feel like, you know, your current situation where you're at, do you feel like it affects like your work, your relationships or social events? No. I mean, it, it doesn't okay. restrict me in any way, no. Okay. And then like I noticed like, you know, you mentioned earlier that your wife wants you to get the six pack as, as well. Is that something that's kind of like, you know, just been like a, a joke or, you know, how does that make you feel when, you, you know, you hear her say that? Well, I mean, it's, it was really me, uh, me joking. Uh, but mm-hmm. my wife and I have always been extremely competitive. And so part of this is about me showing up and, you know, having her feel a little salty, like, wait a minute, look at this guy with the six pack. I, you know, I got to stand a little closer to him when I walk outside with these ladies. So okay. <laughs> it's, okay. that's kind of like a I little drive. That. There's the jerk in me, you know? <laughs> okay. I love that. 100%. Got to have as good in a relationship, right? Keep that's right. On toes. Keep it fresh. Absolutely. All right, my man. So let's say we're talking, you know, 16, 20 weeks down the road and all your goals are accomplished. Like you're feeling good. You're looking good. You got that six pack. When you step out the house, your girl, she scoots a little bit close to you. Just let the other women know this is my man. You know, she's trying to fight him off. What does that look like for you? How does that make you feel? Paint that picture for me. Oh, man, I'm standing 10 feet tall. I'm I'm, I'm the hey. king of the mountain at that point. <laughs> Heck, yeah. That's that's exactly what I, that feeling that I want. It just, you know, it's just it's validation that, you know, it's something that I've always wanted. It was something that I was able to accomplish. And the outcome is definitely generating the results that I knew it would after just putting in the time and the work. Love that. Love that for sure. And so, like, now that I know exactly what you want, why do you think you haven't been able to accomplish these goals on your own? Lack of discipline. Discipline? That's okay. It. Discipline. Okay. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, like, 1 being, like, eh, 10 being, like, it's not a want, it's a need, where would you rank this goal? 7. Somewhere between 7, seven? and 8. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a pretty high number. What makes you say a 7 or an 8? Because, you know, uh... 
as you get older, you start to feel the uh, the the mortality of of self, and uh, you feel like, oh, I'll get back more time, and I can invest it into me. But I'm learning that the problems change, the kids get older, and time is always going to be something that you're battling. So it feels a little mm-hmm. more urgent now than it did before, and it's not because I don't think I can do it. It's just I'm coming to the realization that I could have always done it. I just kept making excuses. Okay, okay, and then, so let me ask you another <laughs> question then. Um, and so I want, I want to play devil's advocate for a second sure thing. and I really hate doing this, but I find that it's very powerful because it's very easy for us to always look at the bright side, right? Like the, what if like everything goes according to plan? What if everything goes, you know, goes really good. But let me ask you this. Let's say, you know, another six months goes by and you keep doing the same thing that you're doing. You keep eating the same way you're eating. You're working out the same way you're eating. You get those abs and they kind of go away and they, the cycle just keeps continuing and, you know, like I said, six months goes by, nothing changes. But if anything, you actually potentially put on another 10 or 15 pounds. Do you think that that would take you from that seven to a 10? Absolutely. Because now, now I'm concerned. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I feel okay. like maybe awesome. I, I got to go see a doctor. Awesome. I don't and you know should if it's in a hospital or on a couch, but something, something's wrong <laughs> if, you know, putting in the work and, you know, I'm, I'm actually getting adverse results. Okay. So, so okay. it would definitely and, intensify uh, that number. Okay. And do you mind if I coach you for a minute? Sure thing. All right, brother. So based on what you told me, here's what's holding you back. So when it comes to the nutrition, there's definitely some things that we can change that's going to help optimize your performance in and outside of the gym, but also it's going to be structured in a way that it's going to help you hit your goals. And it's also going to be structured in a way that, you know, you're not going to be missing any of the foods that you like. Also, next thing is when it comes to like having like the training program, it sounds like you kind of have like an idea of what you're doing, but it's not necessarily aligned and like built in such a way that it's going to help you achieve the results that you want. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right. Okay, my man. So like the good news is like you're definitely a type person that I want to work with. Like I love your reasoning behind it. Like I love your outlook on it. Like you're definitely like motivated and I fucking absolutely love that. Would you like to hear a little bit more about how I can help you with that? Absolutely. That sounds really good. But keep keep in mind, uh, I know we've been role playing and I got these fellas here that I got them tuning out a little bit. So No, we're um, not tuning out. We're, we're not tuning out. No, oh, dude. Okay. We're I'm working. Just making sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. right, Brother, we're, no, we're, we're right. good. Like, you know, the, the, the guest that comes on and kind of like takes nah. over the show. So I'm just No, you know, you're like, all good, nah, brother. Right. You're good. Let well, me call Joshua. Hell yeah, for Joshua, this. let's do it. <laughs> all right, all right, my man. So the way I run my program, I do 16-week cycles just because it takes at least 12 weeks or 90 days to see any real long-lasting changes in the body. So the reason I do 16 weeks is because everybody is different, right? We all have different genetics. Everybody comes in different shapes and sizes. So what this is going to do, it's going to allow us more time to get to know you, your body, and really hone in on your body's chemistry to create the best program that we can to make sure you're going to get the results that you're looking for. So what you're going to get with that is going to be a 16-week fully customized program. And so with the training program, you're going to have cus- you're going to have access to my custom branded app to where you're going to have all your workouts in there, and there's going to be video demonstration for each and every single exercise, breaking down exactly how to do it with the proper technique. So you're never going to be left questioning like, how do I do this? What does this form look like? What does the technique look like? So you're going to have everything set in there. Also, what you're going to get is a completely customized meal plan, and we could do either a meal plan or a macro plan based around whatever you're comfortable with. And the way that I do my nutrition, I do a flexible dieting approach. So this means, like you mentioned that you eat you know, cake, you'll eat cookies, ice cream, things like that. Yeah. The way I design my programs, there's a designed around food that you love, so there's never going to be any food off limit. You mentioned that you know you go out to get pizza sometimes and you go to Olive Garden. You're still going to be able to do that. You're still going to be able to have date night with your wife. There's literally going to be no foods off limit. And I know you mentioned that you know you kind of like the drink. We're able to. We're actually going to be able to make that fit into your plan as well too. So you're not going to have to give up any of the foods. How does that sound? That sounds super impressive. Hell yeah. Awesome. And the last thing you're going to get, which personally for me I think is huge, is going to be the accountability aspect. So I'm in constant communication with each and every single one of my clients on a daily basis. Not only that, but I take it a step further and I do weekly check-ins. So with that, I'm going to go over all of your progress and I'm going to reassess everything and give you feedback to make sure that progress is going to be moving forward in the right direction. So I'm going to be there for you, rooting, cheering you on in the corner. I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader. And when you're slacking off, I'm going to give you a nice swift kick in the ass to make sure that you're doing everything that you can be to make sure that this team is successful. How does that sound? That sounds great. 
<laughs> All right, my man. So between the training, the nutrition, the accountability, which sounds like the most important to you? I think the account, if, if I'm rating it in order, I think the accountability comes in um, first because I think that's okay. the piece that's missing. You know, it's, it's a gift and a curse when you have a body type that usually responds well to exercise and, you know, a change up in, um, in your nutrition approach, you always feel like, oh, man, I, I can hop back on the train anytime and I'll be good. But that actually turns out to be an anchor and kind of stops you from taking it to the next level. And I think the accountability piece, you know, I think that check in, that weekly check in um, and knowing that, you know, you're not going to hold any punches. That's that's going to carry big weight. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I love that. I love that. So the last thing to cover is going to be the investment. So when it comes to the investment in person training, which is obviously very hard right now, we're in different states and also with COVID and all the restrictions, it makes it very hard. So in person training for 16 weeks is going to be like over $3,000. And so with that, you're not going to get any nutrition plans. So with my program, with the training, the nutrition, the accountability for the 16 weeks, it's only going to cost you $2 million. And so with that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, just $2 million? Yeah, no. <laughs> love this sh- Damn, I love this guy. Let me call my Uncle hey, Bill Rudy. Gates. He got, he got me. <laughs> Bill, Uncle Bill got me. I'm good to, for hey, it. I'm gonna have to sell it. No, no, I got you, bro. When that reparation come in, bro, I got you, bro. Hey, when they get when they send me that check, I got you. You the first. You the first. Yeah. Man. So the last part, I normally just go through the investment and just kind of go over, depending upon you know whichever kind of package I feel is going to be best for that individual, and then we kind of go from there. So I got to tell you, man, your this role playing was super impressive because. Uh, I work in corporate America and part of my job revolves around um, a sales piece. And one of the hardest mm-hmm. things to, to, to teach people is how to sell a product without making it sound gimmicky. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And I, you know, the fact that you were able to maintain the conversation pace, you know, uh, recite, you know, personal things that I mentioned as far as things that I ate, you know, uh, the fact that I'm married, you know, things that I mentioned that were a struggle for me and, you know, kind of, uh, customize your your response to me made this super attractive, and I, I have to believe that I understand now why you left your gig. <laughs> yeah. And, you yeah. know, after hearing this, it makes perfect sense why you left your gig and you're doing this full time, man. Because I can tell from your energy and your passion, like you are really about this. Like this, this is your thing, and and. I, I, I just super impressive man. Probably. Watch him on Instagram. Yeah, I'm gonna follow him. Follow, so follow him. Yo, uh, let, me, let me put this out. I was gonna ask you too. This also falls into what Jeff was saying. There's two things I want to cover right now and say the fact that your sell pitch. Yeah, I've never heard anyone do that. Um, I felt like I was listening to that that uh, midnight, two o'clock in the morning when you're growing up and you see that sell pitch. Hey. If you don't get this real estate <laughs> right. book tonight, it's gone. You, you know, the last one, what's holding you up? And the rebuttal, dude, like, so it, it, it threw me off when I heard you go. I was like, dude, this dude's not selling any books. He's selling his service, and he's mm-hmm. actually putting the accountability right then and there. Like, he's giving you a sample like, hey, if you don't want, this is the shit you're going to get. If you're not for real, then this conversation's over. If you're not willing to, uh, to, to right now, and I'm spending like a half an hour, hour with you on the phone. If you're not going to commit by the end of this conversation, yeah, there's no need to talk anymore. It reminded me of uh, done. Wolf on the Wall Street with uh, a Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Wolf of Wall yeah. Street, but hey. just not selling stocks and, and all that. It sounded just like no, that. but but what, which one are you talking about? The one with uh, Leonardo. Nah, you talking about Leonardo or, or Leonard? Because you you said the Wolf on the Wall Street. So <laughs> the hell, what the hell? Get a movies. What ghetto <laughs> movies you watching, Ray? <laughs> shit, Wolf on the Yo, Le- <laughs> that's the one with Leonardo, no, with Le- Leandre and shit. <laughs> what I own this bitch, little. Give me them numbers. Uh, I, I've never seen that one, but yes, Leonardo was. I was yeah, got good. that one right. <laughs> you know, I got to get you. Uh, and the other thing I was going to cover is. Uh, with you becoming an entrepreneur and leaving the man, we were just it was so funny. We were talking about the the man a sure few moments were. ago with sure the Monday were. show. Mm-hmm. What do you, and this being to 20, 21, that was one of, obviously had to be one of your resolutions. Are you, do you wish you had done this sooner? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, but the thing is, you know, I, I believe and you know, I do have a, I have a vision board and oh, okay. a law of uh, attraction, brother. Love it. Yes, 100%. Um, and I'm actually, yeah, I have a couple books right now that are actually about that, that I'm, I, I want to, you know, uh, recommend real quick. So the first one's going to be Think and Grow Rich, and that's by Napoleon Hill. Yes. You, I'm sure, you know, you guys probably heard of yep, that. Yep, that's not, a great I book. I definitely recommend reading yep, that. I read and that then, great book. Uh, my Head Mentor 
recommended this other book, um, Think and Grow Rich, because it's actually recommended at the end of this book. And this book is actually also – so on the back, let me see where it says. It says uh, this book is also rumored to be what inspired Bill Gates to leave Harvard and start Microsoft. So wow. this book is super crazy if you guys are into Was it by Waddles? Uh, Doctor, was it by Waddles? Uh, Charles F. Hanel. And so it's a crazy book. <gasps> it's called The Master Key System. Yes, brother. The they give you what? The Master Key System. It gives you lessons, like 20-something, yes. whatever lessons, each ch- chapter. At first, you have to yes. picture something on a wall, and, and he, he wants you to look at a blank wall and picture a Navy uh, vessel. Yo, the master – this is what they claim that in the secret that – uh, all those, uh, you know, the elite were sitting there learning this. And he was, mm-hmm. I think he died at 54, 64, 54. I, don't, I forgot how, what age he died. But yes, the master, uh, what do you call it? The master what, the key master sessions, key you said? System. Master key system. Master dude. key system. I have it, dude. I have that book sitting upstairs. Yes, the master key system. Yes. It is, the literature is, it's, it's almost like, bro, if you don't pay attention, you will be put to sleep because you really... The literature makes oh, you yeah. have to think. It's almost like reading Shakespeare. Weird. Yes, you have to. You have to really understand what you're reading, it. and yes. like that's why. Like, if somebody's not into, like, I tell them, like, you know, preface it. And once again, I haven't even made it super far in. I'm only a few pages in because I haven't finished uh, Think and Grow Rich all the way. Yeah. And like, I was like super excited, so I started reading the Master Key System. But I was like, no, I got to make sure I finish this book first. Um, but anyway, like, I'll preface it before I recommend it to people. Like, hey. If you're not into like the law of attraction, if yeah. you're not into visualization, and also if you're not into like the universe, because there's a lot in there talking about like kind of like oneness and like the conglomeration as far as that goes. Like if somebody's not down with that or like interested in that, it's like you are not going to enjoy this book. And also like you're not going to understand it. You have to have that open mind when you're going into this and like read the lessons to like actually understand it because it is so thoughtful yes. and it's just it it's so much of like. I don't want to say like brain tease isn't necessarily the right thing to say, but like, you know, it just makes you think so much. Like yes. you really have to pay is attention. Is this for the woke folks? The woke no, people? this is just for anyone, yeah. man. If you, if the, the, no, it's, it really. I mean, I would definitely say you probably, yeah. I mean, you, you might have to be woke. I mean, so like here, I'll just pick out one random little segment to read. So here we go. Uh, all growth is from within. This is evident in all nature. Every plant, every animal, every human is a living testimony to this great law. And the error of the ages is in looking for strength or power from without. Mm, yep. And right? does it, does it keep mentioning, like, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, pre- it talks about uh, things, uh, 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 what's, the, what's the word, permeate or permeate from within? or uh, I know it yeah, it's permeate. All about, it's permeate. all about, in, yeah, it's all about from, like, the, the internal. So, like, this, uh, yes. this, yeah, right here, the world within is, the universal foundation of supply and the world without is the outlet mm-hmm. to the stream. Our ability yes. to receive depends upon our recognition of this universal fountain, Absolutely. this infinite energy of which each individual is an outlet. And so is everyone with an, with every other individual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Shit's so deep, it's, dude. I, I read, I got yeah. to like, yeah. I think I got to like, uh, Maybe chapter seven. Cause it was, it, I mean, you really have to put some time into it, but the shit it was pumping out, it spoke to me, but man, you literally have to take the, you have to do the book justice. And I can see why, um, you know, if you don't have that mental, um, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't have the, the mental, not the capacity, but if you don't have the mental drive, the Fortitude. determination, yeah, you're, 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 you know, I can see why people drop things off. Like you have all the resources in the world. We all have the same, not the same opportunities, right? Some of us have to fight harder for opportunities, but if we apply ourselves and really take the time, yeah, we can really change our mindset. Everything is mindset. Um, yes. That's so why I'm the law right. of attraction, the way it works. Law of attraction works whether you believe it or not. We're governed mm-hmm. by the law of attraction. No one believes it, but that's why the media does what the media does. And that's why there's 1% that can, that has, what, 90% of the money um, is because they keep us, our subconscious running on autopilot that, yo, even though you're like, oh, I feel happy. I feel positive. I feel you, that's bullshit. You, 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 your subconscious is, is, is governed on whatever you're receiving every day. So even though you're like, I'm happy today, but you're got a flat tire. That's because it's the residual, the residual, uh, I would say not the income, but the residual uh, effects that you put out. Yeah, all, over and over. But yeah, yo, that's a, yo, that's an awesome book, bro. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Honnell, Charles Honnell. Yeah. Great book. Um, and I, I got to go back and finish that too. I always say I'm going to go back and finish that. That's a book you got to read over <laughs> and over and over again. Cause you'll, oh, yeah. 
Because it's like a life book. A life so, book you'll get. Huh? So you didn't finish it, Reggie. Hell no. I told you, record, bro. I like the right. chapter seven. I wasn't going to say it. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't finish it, but it's a great book. <laughs> yo, t- yo. For the record. <laughs> I didn't. But yo, one time, even. One time for the folks at home. <laughs> no, I didn't finish it. Yo, it takes some effort, man. Chapter seven, you but, said? Nah, but I got. I finished the, the uh, Science of Getting Rich. I finished okay. uh, the other one, Think and Grow Rich. I did finish those things. Okay. Those were easy reads. The Think and Grow Rich was really good. Um um that was uh there's there's one by um uh, bob proctor which is the science of getting rich right uh, and the other one is think of oh, by napoleon yeah, hill bob proctor. and napoleon hill says hey he brought out these he brings out the stories of why the one was was a a slave no, a black girl that was a slave and she was telling the master like she commanded something from the master and they couldn't he, they he, the master was like because these people paid Napoleon Hill in order to to come out with why do certain laws and stuff work. And yeah, it was a slave girl. And she was like, she talked back to the master and the master listened to her. Um, and he was trying, he was trying to figure out why, what did he, what did she do to command someone with authority to listen to her? Um, damn, yo, this is all coming from my memory. I now. read, uh, get rich or die trying. Hey, shout out. Are we talking uh, about fitting? There we go. <laughs> Fuck. There we go. <laughs> Bruh. Listen, also, quick, yo, it went it went from deep. There's, there's knowledge to be gained in everything. Yo, it went from deep. <laughs> it um, went from deep to uh, real quick, real <laughs> quick. I don't know if y'all are in the into the stock market at all, but I will say, obviously, like we everybody's been hearing like Bitcoin. So I've been like dabbling in the stock market a little bit. Yeah. Just always trying to like educate myself in every area that I can. Right. Uh, but I just read uh, a thing earlier that 50 cent so i think it was like 2007 or something like that whenever he dropped one of his albums or records whatever um he had made the decision for whatever reason to accept bitcoin as a form of payment right and then so i guess not too long ago he recently realized how much bitcoin was actually worth and made like 35 million dollars wow say what you want about 50 50 is a business (laughs) yeah Yeah, he did the vitamin water too and the thing with 50 is he was able to take that 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 street knowledge and apply it in a in a legal corporate setting and you know what Mm -hmm. he he may be the troll of the internet but as far as you know making uh good decisions and 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 say what you want you know if you want to believe oh he's a one-off situation he's not because when you start diving into some of his investments and like his forward thinking approach the man is a multi-millionaire. He doesn't have mm. to cut another album till the day he dies, and him and his 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 future family are going to be okay. So, wow. Yeah. No. Exactly. I, he he has the gift for that. There's people that there's a gift for that. I mean, you could be a street hustler and still and still be broke. You don't mean you have a yeah, gift yeah, for it. Yeah. There's there's ones that become like you know uh, make their money clean. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? What do you call it about making the money clean? I forgot what they call it. Stuff. Laundry, laundering the money, laundering the money, yeah, 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 laundering the money. Swiss bank accounts, exactly, yo, yo. Cayman I, Islands. <laughs> off top, off topic though, yeah. but damn, yo, is is Snoop Doggy Dog not the damn? You guys have respect for <laughs> for Snoop being for, a damn TV Snoop? host, being a damn TV oh. host and a game show host. I think. Yeah, that too. Plus, I mean, the fact that he started, he has his own like cannabis line, and also oh. I mean, he's partnered with some other companies. Yeah, mm-hmm. so like following in the stocks and stuff like that. So if you keep an eye on some of that stuff, there's some there's some big movers going on. Mm, yeah, but the cannabis, I see that they legalized it in to, is it Toronto? Yeah, Toronto they legalized it, so that's gonna be pumped up. And then now you have the UK um, joining forces with that. So yeah, look into that. I started looking at but the penny stocks. I do the Robin Hood. Yeah, you guys do that. Yeah, Robin Hood. Oh yeah, that's that's where I invest. Uh, let me see here. Let I was pissed that day when they when they stopped uh, GameStop, GameStop and they stopped uh, Nokia. Yeah, they're, they're you was trying that. Oh, you tried I'm that. On Try what? AMC still, GameStop. Are oh, oh, you sitting on AMC? AMC? Nice. I'm sitting on a bunch of AMC. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. So circling uh, back on the Snoop the deal, I I you know what I I've always had respect for Snoop, but I knew he was on another level when. He somehow found himself on prime time with Martha Stewart. Yeah, but when I see the game host, I don't see you as that. I mean, uh, yeah. Name another rapper that found themselves in that setting. What, uh, um, Fifty. He well, he wasn't a game host though. No, not a game host. I'm talking about as far as Martha Stewart and having the respect like that. Oh. He, Fifty was in, in, in a predicament like that with her, if I'm not mistaken. I'm a- yeah, right. Fifty. So I don't know about that. I think so with Martha was, Stewart. I know he was rocking with Chelsea Hampton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he was rocking with Chelsea Hampton. That's Did that's you the, just compare Chelsea Hampton. That's, that's the hood. Stewart? That's the hood, yeah. Martha Stewart. <laughs> I got a question for you, Joshua. I got a question for you. Yeah. Hey, so we all kind of know what to eat 
We all kind of know we need to work out. We all need. To, we all know these things. We just know, and we know um, when to do it, how to do it. We, we think we know at least. Why do you believe mm-hmm. that people just fall off all the time? Um, well, I mean, there's going to be a multitude of reasons. So it, like everybody's obviously a little bit different. Everybody has different reasons. Some people, you know, they'll say they have kids, they're busy. Uh, they don't have time for the gym. Uh, I think a big one is, you know, people will use the excuse for time, right? A lot of people will say, I don't have time because of X, Y, and Z. I have kids, I have a job, I, you know, I got my business, like whatever it is. And so what I like to tell people, what I tell people to do, and I did make a post about this. Um, I'll say, you know, instead of saying you don't have time for something, I want you to replace that. And this is what I want you to put, replace it with. I want you to say, it's not that important to me. Mm-hmm. So same thing. If, if any of your boys hits you up, if your mother hits you up, if your best friend hits you up and says, Hey, I need you to help me move something on Saturday. Instead of saying, Oh, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I, I don't have time for that. I want you to say, sorry, I would, but it's just not that important to me. Mm. How would that make them feel? How would wow. that make you feel? Right. You're going to feel like shit because at the end of the day, you do have time. It all comes down to what's important to you. Right. So you guys, you guys have jobs. You guys have kids. You get, you know, you guys probably have wives and stuff. Correct. And you guys probably have. So tomorrow at uh, 6 a.m. You guys are all busy. Correct. Yeah. That's yes. Right. So. Yeah. So same thing. You guys probably heard this one before. So like, uh, you know, E.T., whatever. If tomorrow I'm telling you guys at 6 a.m., if you meet me here in Ohio, I'll give you $2 million if you show up at 6.30 a.m. Are you going to show up at work or are you going to be here? Be there, of course. Absolutely. I'd be exactly. at, I'd be at 5.45. Time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you'll make, you'll make mm-hmm. time because it's, I'm because leaving it's now. important to you. Absolutely. <laughs> but, that's important. a great way to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. It's important to you. So it, it comes down to that. So instead of saying, like, I don't have time for it, say it's not that important to you. Because if you, you, know, if you really sat down and, you know, well, I'll definitely do this with clients too. Sometimes people, you know, say I'm like, I'm struggling. I don't have time. Sit down, right? Break out a calendar or write it down on a sheet of paper from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed for every half hour increment. I want you to put on there six to six thirty, six thirty to seven. I want you to write down exactly what you're doing. So if you're working and if you work from six to 12, six to two, what at nine to five, whatever it is, what are you doing before nine o'clock? Okay. You're getting the kids ready. What are you doing afterwards? Okay. Oh, I see there, you know, you decided to play video games for an hour and a half, two hours. You decided to chill out and watch two hours, three hours of Netflix. You decided to scroll through Instagram. You decided to scroll through TikTok, whatever it is. Boom. There's five hours. Mm. You could take, you could take 60 minutes. All you need is one hour to get a good workout in each day to change your life. Wow. Not only change your life, not only are you going to feel better, not only are you going to look better, it's literally going to change your life. You're going to have more energy to, hang out with your kids to play with them. You're going to have more energy for your wife. You're going to be able to give more passion, more love. You're going to be able to be present Mm. in that situation. So it's literally going to change your life. And all it takes is 60 and you don't even need 60 minutes a day. Honestly, even 45 minutes. If you guys, if you decide to go a little bit more intense, you could get, you can get a great workout in 30 minutes. If you're, if you're busting some ass 25, 30 minutes, if you're really busting ass, I really like to recommend an hour so people aren't killing themselves. But, you know, that's such a small price to pay for all the benefits that you're going to get and the years that it's going to add to your life and your health, not to mention, you know, the potential amount of money that you will save and health risks Mm. from cardiovascular disease, from increased blood pressure, from diabetes, from any other injury that will result from lack of physical activity. Wow. You know what I love that you did right there? I love the fact that you actually made someone budget their time like we all budget Mm -hmm. our wallets we budget the income coming into the house as far what goes out what comes in but not too many people budget their time and 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 put the importance on your health not not only that Mm -hmm. was that he made me think about what do i do from six to six (laughs) thirty six thirty to seven Mm -hmm. seven Mm thirty exactly like yeah like like, wait what what am i doing i don't know and and, 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 and it's true you, yeah, and it's like same thing when you guys, you know, you guys run your own business. You you have to know what you're doing with your time, yeah. right? If you want to have a successful business, you can't be messing around, right? You 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 have to be able to have a schedule. And the thing is, what's funny, and I think that this is where it kind of gets problematic. So, ever since you're a kid, think think about this. How how funny is this? Ever since you were born, you were put on a schedule. 
you get changed at a certain time, roughly, obviously, you know, you can't control that, but you know, you get fed at a certain time, Mm -hmm. you get put to sleep at a certain time, you get woken up at a certain time. Then when you go to school, you go to school at a certain time, you have lunch at a certain time, you have this class, that class, this class, that class at a certain time, all the way from your, when you're preschool, kindergarten, elementary, middle school, high school, even, and then it starts switching a little bit in college. Now there's no more, that structure is not there so much anymore Mm, because it's not as rigid. And then once you're out of college, you have, you have a job schedule. That's it. Nothing else to dictate the rest of your day. So almost our entire lives have revolved around schedules. Now what happens is as soon as you're out of that school environment, your schedule is stripped of you. You don't have that anymore, right? You used to be, we used to be forced to get at least a little bit of physical activity from yeah. having gym class, yeah. right? We used to get that. It used to be part of our schedule every single day. And then as soon as we got out of school, that structure was gone. And then we started making excuses because we started filling that void. We started filling that extra time mm-hmm. with other things, right? And other things that, are, you know, and I'm all about leisure. You know, I, I, I mean, I love leisure. I love hanging out with my girl. Don't get me wrong. Like I love watching Netflix. I love just, you know, chilling out as much as the next person for sure. But there's a time and place and it's all about making sure it's all about balance. I'm all about balance, everything in moderation. That's, you know, that's how I like to live my life. Like nothing's off limits. Yeah. It's all about moderation. And so I'm not saying you can't, you can't ever just sit on the couch. I'm not saying you can't just scroll through the gram. I'm not saying you can't chill out and watch Netflix. But if you're sitting there for four hours watching Netflix and you're saying you ain't got time to work out and, and improve your physical appearance, improve your mental, mm. in, improve your relationship, yeah. and yeah. improve your entire life, my man, priorities are somewhere else. Absolutely, but um, just to uh, put a little two cents in there, if you're Netflixing and chilling, you're actually technically – Doing sixty minutes or more. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> at least I hope, I hope I hope people are. I know, I right? Not gonna lie, if I get in five minutes, <laughs> five minutes and back to the show. Uh, no, but uh, dude, uh, I wanted to uh, ask you, like, uh, if you can come off, uh, you know, off the top of your your dome, if you had any experience you want to tell us about, as far as uh, with a client or something that had unreal realistic expectations you want to tell us about or, or whatnot and if not that's fine um mm-hmm. but we can just uh leave it with you leaving off with a rant if you want because we usually that's what we started off the show with starting with the rant to end it basically whatever you want to rant about a rant of the day a rant of the week um so it's up to you whichever you want to do if you want to tell us about a client and a story or you want to end it with the rant of the day or week hmm. a client who had an unrealistic ex- expectation that gave you hell, like the client from hell. You don't know names, obviously. Hmm. He might have gave them hell. Nah, he, yeah, he, yeah. He, he's got to he's got to have someone that he, that drove them bananas. But they were paying. I mean, <laughs> they were I paying. Mean, the worst wasn't necessarily like a uh, a one on one client, um, because even with that, I try to like only take on people that like you know. I jive with who, you know, who like we kind of click. Yeah. Um, but there, there has been younger kids that would be like in a group setting that would just really drive you crazy. uh, Oh boy. Especially (laughs) when you got, you know, oh man, they like, you know, they like the, Oh, I was, I was raised different than some of these kids, you know, they'll throw themselves on the ground. They'll kick and scream and, you know, I'm not participating and, (laughs) <laughs> blah, 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 blah. It's like, all right, you know, your mom's paying money for you to come here. So if you want to waste it, you know, that's cool. But the thing, you know, I'll, I'll be nice. I'll try to be nice for a little bit and stuff. But I'm like, hey, my man, like, either you're going to participate or not. And, like, if not, you can go sit by your mom and tell her, you know, why you're wasting her money kind of thing and stuff like that. Like, you know, you're here to work. Like, this is not, you know, this isn't a babysitting place kind of you know, anything like that. Um, so, I mean, there, there's been some kids that'll that'll kind of do that. Um, but other than that, I guess I could say I've been lucky enough that I have not, um, had really had any like too unrealistic expectation for my clients. Um, thankfully, uh, I guess the only thing, I don't know if this is like a rant, but something that I, I, I would like to add to this, uh, cause it's definitely changed how I do everything. And I think everybody should do it. And I think it would benefit you guys if you're not. So two things, number one, have a vision board, look at it every single day right? Remind you of your goals. Keep everything in the forefront of your mind. And I believe in having health, wealth, and relationship goals on there. All right. And have pictures to have visuals because the more vivid you can make it, 
the more easy it's going to be to bring that into fruition. Okay. Mm. And the next thing is going to be to have a morning routine. And I don't mean just get up, have a cup of coffee and head out the door, have a set morning routine. So like example, my morning routine, it takes about 30 minutes. I'll wake up, I'll come into my office. And then the first thing I'll do, I'll bust out my journal. I'll write down my, uh, my goals. I'll write down what I'm grateful for. And I'll write down my affirmations. And then I'll also write to my inner critic, that little, you know, that little devil that's in there that's telling you you're not good enough, telling you that you're not going to be successful, telling you you can't do things. I'll say, like, fuck you. You have no idea who I am. I'm more powerful than you can ever even imagine. When you talk, I'm going to grind harder. So I'll talk gotcha. to that inner critic. <laughs> I'll have a conversation with it. So that's the first thing I'll do. I'll write my journal. Next thing, I'll make sure that I'll read a few pages uh, from my book. And like I said, right now, I'm reading Think and Grow Rich. So I'll spend you know, anywhere from five to 10 minutes making sure I'm reading. Next thing I'll do, I'll stand up. I take time looking at my vision board. I review everything. I look at it. I do have written things on there that I say aloud. I look at my health, wealth, relationships, the car that I want in the future, the relationship that I want with my girl in the future, motivation quotes, business things that I have on there. I'll look at that. I'll really soak it in. And the next thing I'll do is I'll sit down, throw my headphones in, and I'll listen to uh, anywhere from a five to ten minute. Uh, I'll do a meditation, and I like to do like a law of attraction meditation, and I have some really good ones if you guys ever want it. Uh, and then after that, I'll watch anywhere from a two to five minute motivational video, and then I get started on my day because I'm put in prime. I know what my goals are. I'm motivated, and I'm ready to get after it. Wow, dude, even even with the rat, this dude is so nice. See, I can't even imagine you being mean to them kids. Josh, <laughs> you know, Josh was over here being mean with a smile. Yo, hey, your, your mom's paying for it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, he's too, too, he's bro, too yeah. transparent, too honest, too real. Bro, your morning routine's got me reevaluating my life right now. <laughs> exactly. Like, for real, for real, exactly. For real. I, I got me rethinking some things, for real. Yo, I thought the, I thought the budgeting was what made you lazy, but fuck that. <laughs> this yeah. morning made me lazy. This dude got a 30-minute 30 uh, 30 morning that sounds that gets more done than a lot of people do. I, I know. thought I was doing stuff until he started. Yeah, dude was I like, know. Yo, I was getting up, brushed my teeth, took a shower, and I'm like, shit, I'm awesome. Until you hear Josh <laughs> talking about, right. well, I got my meditation broke out, I do the law and then i he goes for quotes yeah hunger, what right? the hell hey, it's 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 all about le- leveling up um, absolutely success leaves success leaves clues you look at you know what the most successful people do yep. you replicate that you'll get similar results um and you know like i said like my my mentor he is he wakes up at 3 30 you know he's on it and so like that's what i aspire you know always trying to level up so that's you know working my way there Did i was gonna say, say that his day starts at 3 30 that's what i was gonna tell you yeah and so it's it's very competitive so like i said i'm part of this amazing community and uh we have a leadership team and so there's about seven of us on there and so there is uh another one of uh my buddies is in there he actually so his goal is to beat our our mentor right and so what he set his alarm at yeah he sets his alarm at 329 because he says brian's waking up at 330 you have to wow do i was uh that's saw, how competitive it that's, is that's no i i saw that i saw i i've seen so much successful people that you mentioned that on youtube and stuff like that that say hey they don't you know what time the successful people wake up 4 30 or something in the morning they mm-hmm. don't wake up with the rest of us they wake up and do exactly what you're doing set their mind their mind set for the rest of the day, the meditating, the working out, going over emails and whatnot. But first and foremost, they take like the 10, 20 minutes in bed and, gra- and, 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 and meditate before they grab their phones, before they grab any of their, um, you know, the, yeah. do anything with work, work wise. But that, that's what I've heard. And then I saw something with Steve Harvey again. He says, you know, successful people don't sleep eight hours. He was like, mm-hmm. if you're in L.A., he's like, if you're in L.A., the East Coast, the and it's eleven o'clock. He goes, <laughs> the damn stock market's been open for two hours, yeah. right? So he was right. like, yeah, uh, and, you know that. So it's just empower. It's powerful what you just said, man. Because it makes perfect yeah. uh, sense, and, man. Hmm? Yeah, I was gonna say uh, with that too. Yeah, I, I remember because Arnold. Obviously, everybody already knows Arnold. He's he was always like growing up one of like my uh, inspirations. I had a picture of him on the wall, and I love one of his quotes that he said that uh, you know I don't you know you don't need eight hours of sleep. He's like. You know, if people say that, he's like, I just tell them to sleep faster. I love that. Nice. <laughs> you know? Nice. Yes. And uh, like you said about uh, checking the phone first thing in the morning, too. Yes, 100%. When you guys wake up, the first thing that you want to make sure you're not doing is grabbing your phone because the whole point of the morning routine is to get your mind set 
to get in a positive state for the day. Because the first thing you want to do, you don't want to pick up your phone. You don't want to see a bad text from somebody. You don't want to see something, you know, whatever on social media. There's another COVID outbreak. You know, this yep. is going on in the world. Such Stock such. markets. You don't want to start your day mm-hmm. off that way. Yep. You do not want to start your day off that way. You want to get in a good state. And then, and then deal with the rest of it as it comes. Yes, sir. Absolutely, man. Look at it, dude. This is why we love you. This is why we mess with you, Joshua, because uh, you're an amazing individual, man. You're going to be um, uber successful. I already know that. I already Liz, know that. I came here today. I was a little tired, right? A little down, a little bit. Got in here. Yeah. This phone call conversation with Joshua has got me, like, pumped up right now. Absolutely. I mean, seriously. No, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to pay him. I feel like he drives some <laughs> real knowledge uh, and things on us for free. Yeah. And, you know, this is the stuff that you normally pay uh, uh, pay for. So, yes. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's life-changing stuff right here. Oh, man. I appreciate it. So, you know, so you know how you, wh- what you could do to pay me, my man? I want you to create a vision board, and I want you to come up with a morning routine. And seven days from today, I want you to tell me how much different your life is mm. and how you feel about it. That's 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 all the only thing that I would love. Wow. Okay. I'm with it. All right. Damn, bro. Yo, Joshua, tell them tell these people your cash app so they can pay you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, damn it. No, man. We won't keep you any longer, man. I know you got something else going on. I know you have a, uh you're gonna go with the uh the online battles of uh uh, whether you're a catfish or not with your picks, you got that doing, <laughs> <laughs> you got doing that on your Facebook live and IG, man. Um, thank you again, man, for making time for us, man. We appreciate you. Definitely. Um, Anytime. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, Jeff, you had anything to say? You're good. Uh, now listen, this, this was an absolute pleasure, uh, coming in here, just trying to see how these two work. This, this has uh, already been a very rewarding experience. So listen, brother, sending you nothing but positive vibes and continued success. I look forward to what you're going to do in the future, man. Thank you. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys so much. Every time for having me on, it's always a amazing time. Absolutely. But Hey, tell your girl, we said, what's up and thank you for her time. Will do. Will do. All right, brother. Damn, man, I'm not even going to lie, man. That Every time we talk to that guy, uh, Jeff, I know it's your first time talking to him, but damn, he, he's he's young and he's motivated. He makes me feel like stepping up my game. Well, I have a new nickname for him now. What's up? High, high Octane. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, dude should be like, like he's on drugs. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. on, on himself. I mean, yeah. he's like just on it. It's, it's, it's fast paced. It's get on board or get out the way. Yeah. I mean, it's really like a bullet exactly. coming for you at full speed. Yeah. What was your first impression of him, Jeff? Cause I so know this is my first time on the show. Yeah. First time hearing of him, speaking to him. Yeah. The dude, you know what? He can even, I, I even potentially see him transitioning into like some type of motivational coach, right? Because oh my God. just, just go. yes. in that, yeah. that time frame of yep. speaking to him, um, he had me reevaluating how I spend my time. Um, the things that I'm not doing, yep. um, and and this was all free of charge, right? So yep. this is mm-hmm. this is like a, a, a free jewels, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> for exactly. for you know little little tidbits of how to improve your lifestyle. You know what? Super passionate guy, well spoken. Mm-hmm. Um, he's 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 just dripping success, man. No, he's absolutely, dripping he's dripping success, and and apparently, according to the uh, Facebook group they're in he's dripping girth so uh on that note guys uh, one, one last one last thing about what's him, that guy so i i have my own uh i have i have another uh fitness guy that i've been following okay for years okay I'm, I'm on his program but yeah. i'm definitely thinking about dropping this guy the guy well, should. what are you talking about athlete next <laughs> yeah oh you're talking about oh jeff cavalier Je- Je- Cav- 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 yeah. yeah i'm thinking about just you know putting jeff on the on the back burner and go on my, oh my God, Joshua. But you know what? They say once you go um, black, you never go back. So, <laughs> on that note, it's all about the girth, man. It's all about the girth. Joshua. Bye.